let's say we want to find out what day is 30 work days after December 1st. So I copy and pasted the calendars here and I got these just when you double click in a cell that has a valid date, uh, they'll pop up in Google Sheets. Uh, but I copy and pasted two of them because uh, this spans two months. So let's look at the actual function. You just type out workday and the inputs are the start date. So here I'm just referencing a cell with the date in it. And then the second input is just a number of days away. You can specify holidays, which we'll do in a minute too. But right now you're already getting an output. You can see it here in the blue font. It's saying January 12th, 2018 is 30 days away. So we'll check that by starting on December 1st visually here. And each time we bump down a week, it's five, right? So let's go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's January 12th. All right, nice and easy. That function's working. We'll escape out of that and let's cover briefly some problems that you can encounter. So if you're just typing in this function and you don't have a cell with a date in it, you can't just say 12, 1, 2017 and expect Google Sheets to know that. If you look here, you can already see because these slashes are in black and the numbers are in blue, it's trying to do 12 divided by one divided by 2017. So just typing in a date isn't going to work. So what you can do, you can surround it in quotes and you see how the color changed. That is already a valid date. So let's finish this one off with the same inputs. And that also returns January 12th, 2018. Now the third way to do this would be to use the date function. So let's say you have the value of 12 or December in a column and one somewhere else in 2017, somewhere else, you would use date and then give those inputs accordingly. We'll do that quickly here. 30 days away, same output, January 12th, 2018. All right, so we're going to unhide some rows in this template that uh, I think I already said it, but it's available at sheetshelp.com. There's a link in the description. And the next thing that you can do, let's double click on this function in D3, is that there's an optional third input. We'll expand this text that tells you how to use the formula. And that input is holidays. So you can specify a list of holidays. You can do more than one if you want. And here we just use a cell reference again. So we're going to do something interesting here where this function on D3 specifies uh, Christmas here in the United States, right? As December 25th. But then in the next function, we are also gonna say that we're not working on Christmas Eve. But these are returning the same output and we'll talk about why. So when you come down, it's still the same starting date and there's still the same number of work days away. But when you specify December 25th as a holiday, but this output is three days further. But when you look, that's because the 12th of January was on a Friday and the 15th is on a Monday. But, but then when your company is so generous as to give you Christmas Eve off, you realize cynically that Christmas Eve is on a Sunday and you wouldn't be working that day anyway. So when you specify these two holidays, it gives you the same output. So this function is aware of which days lie on a weekend. All right, so that's the Workday function, and let's talk about Workday International. So we'll come up here and look at Workday International. We'll make this full screen again. And this has an additional input, so we will click on E2. And the Workday International function is the same as Workday at the beginning. It takes a start date and the number of days, and you can leave it at that if you want. So you can use this in the exact same way as Workday. But the next input, the weekends, are new. And what this allows you to do is just specify different weekends. Right? So if maybe you're running a factory and this cohort of people that you're calculating this for get Tuesday and Wednesday off because the machines run seven days a week, you could specify those two days off as a number and this would be the day number. So let's look at the website for Workday International. It's sheetshelp.com and we'll come down 
and you specify the weekend using this number method. And this actually specifies what both days are. So what I say, Wednesday and Thursday. So if I said Tuesday and Wednesday, you would use a four. If I said Wednesday and Thursday, you would use a five. All right, and there's also single days as well. If you're feeling like you wanted to make things more complicated, you could also use a string method. But this method is actually kind of interesting. So you see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven digits here, and you just turn them from a zero to a one to specify if one of these days is becoming a weekend. So that one's even more flexible. All right, so if we come back to here, we are using the same inputs, but here we say there's only a one day weekend. And then that way you get those number of work days out of the way sooner. You're done January 5th, 2018. All right, so if you're wanting a little bit more information about just how dates work in spreadsheets, because underneath they are just numbers, this next video is going to go in depth about how to work with dates. Thanks for watching and if you like this video, you can subscribe to this channel and you'll see a lot more of them just like this in the future.